Hello and welcome inside the WOSN studios. It's time for another week of high school football talk with the guys from Press Row. Todd Walker, Aaron Matthews, Mark Kuntz. I'm Matt Finkel. We're going to jump right into the Western Buckeye League this week because coming up week six, we've got a good one. 4-1 and one Salina against 5-0 and oh Wapakoneta. 5-0 and oh Wapakoneta, they've struggled in the first halves of their last two games. They trailed 7-0 to Bath at the half last week, came back, got 17 unanswered, got the win. This will be their first real test coming in, I think, for the regular season for Wapak. Who's going to win this game? Whoever scores the most points. <laughs> Who's going to score the most points? Uh, the I'm team gonna, with the most points on the scoreboard <laughs> at the end of the night. I'm going to go with Wapa Canetta. Uh, I, I think this will be a great game, though. But, you know, you got to like Mr. Big Play, Cameron Lauk. And uh, the Wapak MO the last couple of weeks has been, it's been a slow start. But it, really, their defense has been up to par. It just takes the offense a while to get going. And again, then they make some big plays in the second half. And I see no reason why that won't continue this week. But uh, I, I don't know if this will be their strongest test, I guess. Yeah, on paper, it should be their strongest test to date, but I'll take Wapa get out of there also at home on, on their turf, so to speak, and uh, I think that helps them a great deal. Well, Salina barely beat Elida. Wapkinetta beat Elida rather handily, so case Although closed. Two, sco two scores yeah. in the last four Wapkineta minutes. Wapkinetta should win easily. Yeah. Well, yeah. the transitive property does not work in sports. It, it's great for algebra and geometry, but not in mathematics, but not necessarily in sports. But, you know, you, you look at the Wapakoneta schedule, they have not been tested yet. What they have been able to prove, though, is they play four quarters of football, which hasn't necessarily been the case the last couple weeks for their opponents. Were they able to come back in that fourth quarter to beat Eli to end? Similar situation last week against Bath. Salina, on the other hand, has played four full quarters. They've, they've had some come-from-behind victories. They've had some impressive victories. But I think Todd hit it on the nail there. The fact this game is going to be at Wapakoneta. We're going to find out how good Wapak is over the next couple of weeks with Salina, with St. Mary's, with Van Wert still on their schedule. They've had the easy part of the WBL. Now we're going to see how good this Wapak team really is. I think I get the edge to Wapak with it being at home at Harmon Field, but I think Salina may be that te that one test, that breaking point that says to this Wapak football team, all right, boys, we've got to put together 48 minutes of consistent football. The Salina team can get out on you in a hurry with the offense that they run. They spread the field. They'll, they'll run the ball as well. And they'll come up and they'll smack you in the mouth defensively. So I think Wapak, which is right up, that's their wheelhouse right there. Could be a very physical, very good game. I think I give the edge, though, to Wapak being at home. Slight edge there, and Travis Moore continues that regular season win streak. The turning point in that Wapak bath game was the Lennon Hall pick six, where Wapak had already scored 10 unanswered, but that really broke the backs of the Wildcats. But I do think they gave a pretty good blueprint of how to beat Wapak and that you keep the ball out of their hands, play physical, and hope for a big play or two. We move to the MAC now. I think we have a clear one and two. You can debate the order there in Coldwater Marion. Who's the third best team in the MAC right now? Well, I guess, mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking Minster, but you know, I, I guess we might need more proof or more sample size. But I, I think Minster is still very good. I know that they lost twice already to the top two we've already talked about, but uh, they're a defending state champion and they got a huge win last week. Uh, I, I would go with Minster, but there are certainly other candidates. Well, I say we'll find out in about 10 days from now when Minster plays Fort Recovery. I think Fort Recovery is the third best team in the MAC, but Fort Recovery, similar to Wapakoneta, hasn't necessarily been tested yet as Fort Recovery still has to play, Minster still has to play, St. Henry still has to play, Marin Local. They are undefeated right now, and they proved that last year was no fluke for Brent Niekamp's club. I, I do think they're the third best team in the league, and behind Marin Local and Coldwater, there's no shame in there. Since Mark took my answer, I'm going to say St. Henry's still chomping at the bit as well, guys. I still think, though, you take Minster and Fort Recovery, you bracket those two, 1A, 1B, no particular order there. You've still got St. Henry right there and getting after it as well. And this St. Henry team could be, you know, one of the most improved teams that we've seen in our area from the last year, especially two years ago when they really struggled. But uh, I'd still keep an eye on St. Henry and what they do. They're trying to, you know, knock on some doors. And as we've seen in the last few years, guys, is, Evidence last year with the three state titles that Minster brought home. There's no shame in finishing third place in the MAC, especially if you put a deep playoff run together. Interesting that Fort Recovery does not have cold water on their schedule. So if Marion Local beats cold water and then Fort Recovery beats Marion Local, there could be a three way to Ameri Fort Recovery could be included in as mm -hmm. MAC champs, which would be such a great stride for that program. And some pundits had Fort Recovery as the Division Seven state champion in the preseason, too. Right. So, they are ranked third in the state in right. B7 right now. I, I, I think they will win the Division 7 state title. It's coming out of the MAC regardless. 
All right, let's go to the track now, head north. Finley's 5-0. and oh. Are they the real deal? We're about to find out. Yeah, they had yeah. their upcoming schedules. Yeah, you, you, their last three games, wins against Southview, St. Francis, and Clay, all three of those teams are just one and four. It gets much more difficult for the Trojans beginning this Friday as they travel to St. John's, who's 4-1 and for they host Lima Senior, who's also 4-1, and one, and then they still have Whitmer and Central Catholic coming up on the schedule as well, both of those games on the road. So we're, we're going to find out how good this Trojan team is. We, we certainly know Emmanuel Mobley is the real deal, a very talented running back that's also quite adept at catching balls out of the backfield as well and gives him a, a, an added weapon in, in that aspect as well. Yeah, I haven't got to see Finley play or know much about their non-conference schedule, but nice to see them back in the conversation uh, in football. It's well, been a while. Well, they beat Anthony Wayne, who's three and two, beat Hamilton, that's two and three, and then uh, right. one so, and four South. Yeah, not not a great resume at this point, but some lopsided wins too. So you know, it, when you play teams that aren't maybe that good and you whack them, that's what you're supposed to do. So at this point, I guess it's a bit of an incomplete for Finley, but. Uh, that track schedule is beckoning beginning with this week and should be a great showdown up there with them and Lima Senior in two weeks. If I remember correctly, Finley started out, what, 4-1, 5-0 and last year? 5-0 until they played Spartans. Yeah, right, exactly. So, you know, and they, they kind of petered off a little bit there. They still, you know, put together a above 500 season. But, you know, this week, St. John's, Lima Senior, you've still got Toledo Central Catholic. You've got Whitmer still to come. A very big grind with, you know, the next five weeks for this Finley Trojans team. If they can get a win this week on the road. That would be huge for them. And let's stay on the track quickly. Just talk Spartans for a minute. What did you think that bounce back win did for, for this team? And last year they didn't suffer a setback till pretty late in the season. This year got one a little earlier. How'd they look this week? And do you think this will help them going forward? Well, it might be a little hasty to call it a bounce back win, to tell you the truth, because a lot of the same problems they had. They did fumble it six times. Yeah. The turnovers. Yeah. They, they got to do a better job of holding on to the ball. A lot of fumbles. And on the week four, there's interceptions. There's fumbles against Fremont Ross and some drops as well. They, they got to take better care of the ball, particularly as they get deeper into this track season and start playing the puffer teams in the track. You can't turn the ball over like that. The system that they run is a high-risk, high-reward system. At least it can be. And, you you know, you do take risks slinging the ball around and also getting your receivers out thinking they're in open space. Oh, they cough up a football here. They cough up a football there. And as we've seen, turnovers have been the biggest bugaboo to the Spartans' offense so far this year. They've got to take care of the football the next few weeks as well going in. You've still got Central Catholic on the horizon this week with Toledo St. Francis, a team that could come in and, you know, give, the, give some problems to the Spartans potentially as well. Take care of the football. The offense will be there. Defense, they're banging heads. They're, they're knocking that points allowed total down a little bit. They've got to keep teams in that 30 points or less range, I think, for them to, you know, ride out this storm. You know, I haven't uh, done the numbers, but it seems that the Lima senior offense is not what it was last year, even though most uh, all the skill guys, except for Janiel Lyles, returned. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just something not quite clicking with them offensively, the fumbles notwithstanding. That offense just, I think, is a little bit below what it was last year, at least at this point. Defensively, I think they're better, yes. and they've proved that as well. So it could even out uh, all told, but you cannot fumble the football at the goal line you cannot fumble the football in your own end zone, which the Spartans did uh, in total multiple times. They're twice going in, once in their own end zone. You just cannot have that kind of foolishness and think you are a good team. They've got to clean it up this week. They really need to take care of St. Francis because going forward, the teams will get tougher. The win over Ross was good that they bounced back and won, but it was not a strong performance. They need to look much better this week with the Knights moving forward. All right, let's uh, go to college football now. Ohio State begins Big Ten play this week at Indiana. So after seeing their non-conference play, and they're undefeated, of course, are they still the favorites in the Big Ten? Well, I, I don't think there's any question that they are the favorites. Uh, you know, I mean, but they based are still on number their one, first right? four games, I mean, you could, uh, Michigan State had a couple games, you're like, well, that wasn't a great performance either. So I think the Buckeyes clearly are the most talented, but there's no question they're, they're sputtering compared to what we thought they would be. And it's all about the offense not flowing. And, you know, who knows when or if they get it put together. I think it was good last week. Curtis Samuel busted out with a couple of big plays. Uh, they need more of that. They've not been as explosive. And uh, it's a mystery to me, but maybe they'll figure it out against Indiana because their defense surely hasn't stopped anybody. And one of their best players has been suspended. So I'm figuring this will be a shootout. 
to some degree in Bloomington. But I, I think also Indiana's offense is about to find out what a real defense is. I think the Buckeyes will win this game, but it's a little disconcerting right now the way their offense has managed to keep other teams in games. Well, you look at the Big Ten, you look at the, the non-conference games in the Big Ten, and what, where are the marquee victories for the Big Ten, the non-conference? Well, Ohio State, pretty easy win over Virginia Tech. Michigan State's win over Oregon all of a sudden doesn't quite look as rosy, and you're left to think to yourself perhaps the best win in the non-conference portion of the Big Ten was Michigan manhandling BYU and winning that game 31-0. So maybe the best team in the Big Ten right now is in the state of Michigan, but not the Spartans, but the Wolverines. Now, Jake Ruddock's got to do a better job at, at quarterback. Again, the turnovers go back to, to that. That's always a great equalizer in college football and all levels of football, really. But I think what the Wolverines have done so far this year, four games under Jim Harbaugh, they look to have taken a, a step back up into the upper echelon of the Big Ten. It's going to be an interesting little uh, three-game uh, series between Michigan, Michigan State, and Ohio State. I think whoever wins the Big Tens, whoever comes out of those games unscathed. You talked about Michigan there for a minute, and they've got a road test this week. They're going to Maryland. That's not a road test. Well, it's a, it's a night game. I think Michigan can come out on top. But, you know, last year when they went to Rutgers, they were the favorite in that game as well, and they ended up, you know, falling by the wayside a year ago. Now, obviously, a whole new system, whole new everything at Michigan. But I think for Ohio State this week, I think it's almost got to be a statement week for them as well as say, hey, you know, we're tired of playing around. Go out and handle business. The last time they went to Bloomington, Mark, you were there, and it was, it was shootout city. And it's been that way ever since Kevin Wilson has taken over this Indiana program. They've got great offense. They have de defense that's really suspect. And I'm sure that uh, Urban Meyer, Ed Warner, and his offensive staff are working on exploiting that defense even further going forward. You know, the other thing that uh, is interesting to me, I think some of the middle tier teams have gotten better. I think Northwestern is better. Uh, I don't know about Wisconsin, but I think Iowa's better than they have been. Uh, maybe the middle of this league isn't as soft as it was last year. So, well, but, but you also you can't really talk about the middle of the league anymore because of the divisional well, alignment. Right. The, the, the top of the Big Ten East, Ohio State, Michigan State, and I'll put Michigan in that. They're the best. Mm -hmm. Right. Those middle teams are all out west, and I think the, the western division of the Big Ten is still very much up for grabs. I don't know if we might learn a little bit more this week. We have Northwestern playing Minnesota. You have Iowa playing uh, – or no, uh, Iowa is playing – Iowa, Nebraska, Minnesota, Northwestern are all kind of playing each other this week. So we're going to find a lot more about the, the West this week. Looking forward to Sunday's Buckeye What Insider. about the, uh, the Big Ten overlords, as the Washington Post <laughs> called it? Yeah. <laughs> now, Bowling Green is 2-0 oh in, the, in the Big Ten. They, they beat Maryland. They beat yeah. Purdue. I don't know if it would go much further and than that. They've got a but quarterback that's putting up Heisman-like numbers. So. Yeah, he's putting up huge numbers. Uh, Falcons open Mac play at Buffalo this week. So we'll see if it can continue. Have fun on that trip, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> All right, let's close with, Ohio, with some pro sports now. And Ohio has six pro sport teams. Mark specifically said he did not include the Columbus crew. So which one of those teams will win their pro championship first? Cavaliers. Well, I mean, the Columbus crew has got the most recent championship of that group. So that, that's right. why we can yeah. exclude them from this Did they win it? Yeah. Uh, whatever. Cavaliers. <laughs> Cavaliers yeah. will be the first one. The, the Reds are nowhere close. The Indians really aren't either. Uh, the, but they, the they made Browns? a run for the wild card. The, the Browns? Come they've got, on. They got the, the rookie of the, the year, Francisco Lindor. The Bengals? No. Uh, the Cavaliers are obviously on the cusp. So if I have to pick one, it'll be them. And, okay. Uh, you'd like to think one of those other teams could be a contender maybe sometime soon, but I don't really have much faith in that. Cavs, Bengals, Indians in that order. Wow. You guys are all forgetting about the Columbus Blue Jackets. I was just going to say, they didn't they get Brendan Sott? They got the, the, one of the hottest goalies in the game. They, if they can stay healthy, the Blue Jackets, I think, have got a very good chance of making the postseason. You get into the postseason in hockey, anything can happen. I'm going to say the Blue Jackets will win a Stanley Cup before the Cavaliers take home the NBA title. You going to grow a playoff beard? You already beat you're, you're to gonna, it. You're going to get a little more growth to it, though? It's got to get really gnarly yeah. to be a playoff beard. <laughs> they better get winning soon because the Cavs' window is these next two or three years. That's so, correct. Yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, thanks a lot, guys. As always, good stuff. That'll do it for this edition of Press Row. We'll be right back here next week to talk more high school sports.